Minnesota Public Radio and Fox 9 News recently reported that parents and teenagers are once again frustrated by a dearth of appointments for the required road test portion of getting a driver's license. Senator Karin Housley authored a bill in 2020 that would allow third parties to offer the road test, and she joins me now. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me again, Shannon. Your bill passed the Senate in the 2020 session, as I said, but it was not taken up by the DFL-controlled House. Remind us again of what the situation was. Um, well, we were right in the middle of COVID, and um, there had already been a backlog of kids trying to get their driver's license testing appointments, and then COVID made it that much worse, and uh, the department actually shut down some of their testing sites, so so it got even worse then because they didn't have, um, they wanted to you know keep it more controlled. So I had the bill, we do this with bus drivers um, for them to get tested, so I took the idea from that. That's allowed in the state of Minnesota to have a third party tester test our school bus drivers, and that took a bunch of people out of the system to backlog, and that, pro that program's been going smoothly, so I thought, why can't we just do this with our, our Class D drivers test to take those kids out and have them go to third party testers, which would relieve a lot of the backlog, and you wouldn't have to be driving all over the state to get your driver's test appointment. So last fall, Driver and Vehicle Services enacted some changes to streamline the process, including shortening the scheduling window to 30 days. It had previously been six months. Uh, they also allow people to sign up for notifications when openings are available. So from my own personal experience, because I have a now 16-year-old trying to get his license, I put a note in my calendar 30 days in advance to sign up, and when I went online, there were no appointments available in the entire state of Minnesota. I eventually found one in the metro area, not my closest one, about a week after I was hoping for, uh, but it was a process of constantly checking the website, and I know that I'm not alone. How onerous should this process be? It shouldn't be onerous at all, and your story is so, so familiar. We see it all over the news. Um, it should be an easy process, and the anxiety it causes the, the kid and the parent uh, it's worse than trying to get a Taylor Swift concert ticket because you're constantly logging into your computer and like, oh, let me see if there's an appointment available. Oh, no, not again. So this is, and parents are actually taking off work to do a four-hour trip out to Alexandria and back or up to International Falls. That's not government working efficiently. So uh, this this bill that I do have would actually alleviate that and it could open it up for more third-party testers, more testers across the whole state. So you wouldn't have to drive up north or out west to get your, your driver's test. Uh, taxpayers say often that they want the utmost efficiency from their government services. And for many services, there is a wait time. You know, it's not always like same day or right away for various services and programs. So a larger question perhaps is, what is the ideal level of availability and convenience that taxpayers should expect? And I, I, each, each department or each, each agency is a little bit different. I know when I had to uh, go through Social Security to get information after my parents passed, um, that took a long time too, but when it's something like getting a, a driver's license test appointment, that shouldn't be uh, out six months or you shouldn't be able to have to wait that long to be able to get in somewhere. And even when the department changed it from six months down to 30 days, so you couldn't get one six months out and then cancel it and then a bunch of these opened up, it still isn't working. So this is an idea just to propose, and again, we already do it with our school bus drivers, that why can't we do it for class D driver's tests? So that's, and as far as, as government being efficient, you know, how efficient is government and what do we expect? It's, it's always slower than we want it to be. But when it comes to kids getting their driver's license, that's, that's pretty urgent. You've said that you do plan to reintroduce a bill uh, to do this, third party testers for class D road tests in the next legislative session. So would that mean that driving schools that specialize in training kids for their driver's licenses would be able to administer the testing? And how can we ensure that it's the same quality of testing and that you don't have the behind the wheel instructor actually proctoring the exam or any conflicts of interest? Is that, would, will that be spelled out in your bill? Yep, it is spelled out in the bill. Um, the driver's schools actually are not allowed to test their own driver's school students, so they would have to go to another third-party tester to get tested. And also there's language in the bill that 
they, there are audits and reports and, uh, and safeguards so that wouldn't happen. So we, we would make sure that those people aren't doing that. Um, and again, they're doing it with the school bus drivers and they're, they're driving our kids around. So um, I think it's, it's a great idea, a long time coming. So I'm hoping since it did pass the Senate, um, there are Democrats on board in both the House and the Senate that would go for this. It's just a matter of it getting a hearing. Now, we talked about driving schools. Would it be possible that also deputy registrars could go through the certification to offer road tests or even the creation of new companies simply for this purpose? Is it is it kind of open ended how this might play out? It is open ended. And I think anybody that wants to, I don't know who would just want to start up a business just to test. Um, I think there's already people in the in the loop in that arena doing that. But yeah, absolutely. And they would they would get trained by the same people that are getting trained at the state to do it. So it's not like a different training for the third party testers than that, that's already in place. So they would have to go through the same thing. They would do the exact same test. And also when it comes to the driving schools, in in the bill there's language that the driving schools, when let's say they're testing somebody else's student, they still aren't allowed to um, administer the test on the same road or the same uh, route that they're doing their training. So there would be two separate testing and training. Uh, so that language is in the bill too, to make sure that, that we've got some oversight of it. Uh, let's just talk about cost for, for a moment. Um, as it stands, it's free the first two times you take your road test. If you're at third or subsequent times, you have to pay $20 per time. Would testing be free through a third party? And if not, does that set up sort of a two-tiered system where people with more means have better access than people with less means? That would be up to the third-party tester if they wanted to test for free. I, I'm not sure if they would or not. But still, if you take a bunch of kids out of the system or a bunch of people in the queue to get tested, if you take them out, that frees it up for everybody else to get it free. So that argument that, that the Democrats I know have been saying it's, it's, you know, is pay to play doesn't make any sense because you're freeing up a bunch more spots for everybody to get it free. Are you, um, as you prepare to reintroduce this bill, are there any changes to how it was introduced in 2020 or is it essentially the same and you'd just like to see it move forward? I would just like to have it get a hearing. Um, we had really great hearings when we had it in the Senate two years ago, or 2020. And um, I would like to have the department at the table to explain their fixes that they, they propose and have implemented aren't working at all. So this is all on them. And I'd like to get them to come forward to tell us what went wrong and why don't they want to support this? Because it's best for the kids, for the parents, uh, for these kids wanting to get jobs, they to drive to their job. It's it really, really is a good idea. And again, we already do it with our bus drivers and everything is safe there. So I think it's worth giving a try. So I'd like to get a hearing. The language has stayed the same. Um, so hopefully come February, uh, the transportation chair Dibble will, will give it a hearing. Senator Karen Housley, thank you so much. Thanks, Shannon.